Hi, I'm Ron with Ron's Classic RVs. I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story of how I got this fifth wheel right here, 42 foot long monster of a thing. I got it for a dollar, one buck. Had a little hitch to it though. There was a little, there was a stipulation that I had to do. Follow along, I'll tell you this story. It's kind of an interesting one. Got Remembrance over here. She's gonna get her first workout for pulling a big fifth wheel. And boy, do we have a big fifth wheel here too. Look at this bugger. Looks gorgeous on the outside, and it's a it's a big one too. Holiday Rambler, Alumascape, total of four slides on it, two doors. Apparently the back end of the thing completely slides out like a telescope or something like that. But there is a bit of a downside with this thing is it's a hoarder's paradise. You can see the slide partially sticking out right there. Whole back end of it sticks out some. But the inside is really, really in really bad shape. Well, you'll, we'll probably see it here shortly. I gotta get this pickup truck box out of the way and see if I can get hooked on to her. Yep. Well, we've got the old camper home. Nice and safe. Remember, it's did a good job of pulling it. Now it's gonna be a garbage can. Let me show you this. This is, this is some of the ickiest I've ever, ever, oh my God. I don't know if you know this or not, but the walls are actually white and that is cig cigarette stains, nicotine stains. All the humanity absolutely hammered up here hammered i don't even want to walk it's, it's like every horror house movie that you've ever ever seen the amount of oh god so this is like a before shot here of the hoarder's paradise we should have seances in here oh look a salt lamp and the floor it's it's raw it's rotted out where's my foot there's, there's nothing underneath that part. You gotta straddle a couple of the beams right here in order to walk the floor. Mmm, yes. Oh, Fido. I don't want to end up in the basement of this thing. So the cobwebs hanging. Oh my God. Hey, look, it does have a built-in washer and dryer. Yeah. Have to close this back bedroom. Yeah, completely scuzzed up. Oh, hoarder's paradise. Separate toilet. And, and yeah, go figure, huh? Packed, just jam packed full. Wow. Wow. That is, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a couple, couple uh, trips to the dump, I'm sure. Get this whooped right into shape. I'm gonna get some personal protective gear on right now. A uh, respirator, big one, and I in gloves and <laughs> and start shoveling this mess out. I'm sure all this just fine. It 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 feels fine. Yeah, it should be okay. Well, here we are after the first day. I don't know how many hours I was into it. Shows up really yellow in here because the fluorescent lights. We've got so much nicotine on them, but here's the front area kind of cleaned out. Oh, it still stinks. Stinks so bad. I've had a respirator on this whole time. Here's the dining room area. Yeah, all the, ki the kitchen area. I found all these DVDs and, and Xbox 360 and Xbox One and Blu-rays. I don't know, just, and oh, and CDs, yeah. It's just hard to, you know, pitch those. I'm old to see if there's anything good in there. 
all the cabinets are cleaned out, refrigerators cleaned out, all the food items are cleaned out. You know, we gotta keep shoveling, get rid of all this electronics, the big screen TV, the speakers, the entertainment center. Look at this. That's just a giant pile of ashes. The guy just sat right there and ashed, ashed on the floor. Look how nice and clean that couch is. So we got a full trailer getting ready to go to the dump. Take that down tomorrow. Keep on a cleaning it up. Oh, it's just two or three days just getting the garbage out of here, and then it's probably going to be a couple weeks of scrubbing walls. Ah. Here's our fix for the floor. I just keep putting down pieces of <laughs> filing cabinets and bookcases and entertainment centers, and just <laughs> so I got something to walk on so we don't fall into the basement. No, oh, what's going on over here? Oh, geez. Yep. All right, let's see you tomorrow. We are beginning to start day number two. We got to clean out this bedroom right in here. Horde. I can't even, well, I can't even get through the door. Probably not going to time lapse it. We'll just do kind of, this is the before. I wonder where the light switch is at. Jesus. Oh, this thing just stinks. It stinks so bad. There's got to be a light switch in here somewhere. Slide, glide here, this one. Hey, there we go. Oh, one light each. There's two. Uh, I guess I'll have to get another something, something back here. Bathroom, bedroom, back of the truck. Yes. Ugh. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Well, I've got all of the garbage and all of the stuff out of here. Back bedroom. Wonderful cabinetry in it. At least the floor's solid back here. Yeah. Oof. -da. Yeah. Look at the look at the cobwebs that are that are in here. Just God, why? Unbelievable. Get on the vacuum and start doing a little vacuuming. See if we can clean this shit hole up. <laughs> that dog's quite the little chatter over there. Well, after three days, well, three evenings, so I basically got about nine to 12 hours into it. Because I, you know, daytime running to the dump. 3,500 pounds of personal belongings, furniture, everything that was in this thing was thrown away because of the damage from the smoke and the filth that was on it. It was just uh, of light vacuuming, well, heavy vacuuming on the carpet. And the walls have been vacuumed to get the cobwebs off. Ugh. This carpet right here, it's, it's crunchy. Either it was really wet right here and it might be wet because that roof vent up there, it was leaking. And then of course it leaked for a long time and then all the dust and the scuzz just was left on it. And it just built up. I am going to try to take some hot pine saw and simple green mixture and a scrub brush and scrub it. I'm gonna put my vacuum cleaner into the wet mode over there and suck it up and see if we can try to make this stain get just a little bit better. Well, now it looks like somebody was murdered right here. But the nap is back. It, it's all standing up. I don't know why somebody, well, I think maybe something red was spilled there and that's what the hard material was. We're gonna dry it out, 
maybe some carpet extracting food to get it out, but that made nap again. So it worked out really well. Very kind of labor intensive. Let's call it a night. It's Friday night. I think it's time to drink some beer. We're fixing to start day five on this little dream boat here. Yesterday we got this stuff called Awesome and applying it full, full force right to the walls, wiping it off, and it is making an amazing, amazing difference. Here's the walls that have been clean and you can see where the ceiling hasn't been cleaned at yet. So, oh yeah, time consuming, holy moly. The slide out hasn't been cleaned. You know, here, oh yeah, kitchen counter's clean, stove, oh, it's coming along. Yep, so we're gonna fire up with day number two of wiping walls and ceilings. Lights up there, they're wiped off, cleaned. Shine, shine, shine. Oh, back, back to the scrub end. It's kind of a filthy job, but it uh, it's coming around. It's It doesn't smell so bad. Kind of reminds me of changing baby diapers back in the day. Not the first day you did it, not the first month that you did it, but more like after you've been doing it for two years and you got one of those blowouts and you and you're so good at it you can like clean it all up with like two wet naps <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna get at this keeping it hopefully off of me Ugh. but uh let's do a little time lapse show you what's involved in doing this Just pulled the window valances and window shades off of this slide out in the front dining room. This is the, oh, the living room, yeah. This is the filth that's left behind. You can even see where the valances used to be and the stain of the, oh, God. The windows are so filthy you can't even see out of them. Unbelievable, huh? Well, let's take two hours, clean it up. Well, Furnace made it for about four hours and then it, it finally wet the bed. So we gotta give her the whole rebuild. Last night it was short cycling, which means that the flame would come on, but during the, the heat cycle, it's requesting to put heat out, but you could hear the flame turning on and off, on and off, which tells me that the high temperature limit switch is weak and it's, it's buried inside this thing. So we actually have to pull the furnace out this one was really pretty straightforward, sitting right here. The high temperature limit switch is that little shiny thing down in there that you can just barely see. It won't even focus, yeah. And then all this hair that's all over this thing. Of course, it's absolutely filthy. I just dug this out of the squirrel cage. This is the room circulation fan right here. This whole thing is just completely, completely covered in hair and soot cigarette smoke. Our flame spreader, it's plugged up right through there. And our sail switch, completely covered in hair. This, this is stuff that makes things not work, is this. Extreme amount of smoking and pets, because these things don't have a furnace filter on them. So when you've got cats and dogs in your RV, <laughs> this is what happens, yeah. So let's, uh, let's keep tearing into it some more. So after removing the motor that drives the combustion fan, which sits over on this side, and the room circ fan that sits over on this side, take a little bolt out, and right there is your high temperature limit switch. So it's a bimetal switch, it stays closed, and then if it gets too hot, it pops open, cuts off power to the main board, turns off the gas valve, but the board will keep the fan running so it can cool off the heat exchanger. Well, when they short cycle and they turn the flame, the flame turns on and off while the cycle is still taking place, this is weak and it's popping off too soon. So we need a freshie. And this will give us a chance to clean this thing up. So there, I mean, there was, there was hair completely covering all of this. This is all stained now with cigarette smoke. So I'm kind of glad this happened because it made me get in here and clean this thing. Yeah. One thing that's always important when you're working on your furnaces is to know what model it is. So this is an Atwood, and this is a bit of an older one, the old 8940 Mark III. It's a 40,000 BTU furnace. That's the biggest they make them. 
I'm gonna go get the parts out of my truck to get this thing whooped into shape. We started on this project about the middle of October, had nice weather, and then at the beginning of November, I managed to bugger up my back and it stopped this project dead, dead in its tracks for almost like two months. Luckily enough, it warmed up at the middle of January. I got back on cleaning up the walls to finish this up because I wanted to show you the whole thing when it was done. And then we got a 35 below zero cold stamp. <laughs> I tell you. So now it's warmed up again. It's 60 degrees. It's January 30th on 2024. I did a little before and a little after. A little montage. I want to show you all the work that we got done on this thing. Check it out. I know, right? That's a lot of dang work. I mean, a lot of scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. Our front carpet's been steam cleaned twice and it might survive, I'm not sure. The window valances, they've been steam cleaned, all of them pulled down. We're waiting for extra scratch to buy more blinds to put in the windows right now. All the cabinetry's done. Every light in here has got a brand new light bulb in it. Fixtures have been all repaired. Oh, it's going to come out. Uh-huh, uh-huh waiting to fix the floor in it. Next major project. I fixed the furnace in it. I fixed the refrigerator in it. We haven't looked at the hot water heater yet. We're gonna put a new turlet in it for sure. I haven't really done the plumbing yet, but I know the sewer doesn't leak all over the ground. So lots of things. Shower is all nice and squeaky clean up right here. This, this stain back here, it ain't coming out. And this carpet's got so much cat piss in it that we're gonna have to get rid of it, unfortunately. Mirrors are so clean, you can see yourself. This is just turning into a real nice, a real nice little outfit here, especially for a dollar. I paid a dollar for it. Had to clean it all up and stuff like that. that that's the choice. Oh, and put a new floor in it and fix the furnace and the, and the refrigerator and hot water heater. Shop. We got a hole in the tank. Roof probably leaks. <laughs> so that's our little journey here, fixing up this fifth wheel. Do the floor in it next, knock that out, get some new linole in them and some new carpet in it. And then we'll have a nice fancy thing to, you know, fifth wheel with and stuff. I'm Ron with Ron's Classic RVs. I've had a blast making this. Only took me four months to knock this video out, but <laughs> thanks for sticking around and watching. Bye-bye.